We were all tuned in to Monday's Apple event, hoping to hear more news on a certain trendy wearable. Along with plenty of info on that, Apple also revealed a brand new redesigned MacBook and gave a bump to the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro lines. Well, today we're taking a look at one of those bumps, the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. On the surface, there's not much difference in this revision. This MacBook Pro still measures in at 1.8 centimeters high, 31.4 centimeters wide, and 21.9 centimeters deep. And if you're curious about the weight, this Pro weighs in at 1.58 kilograms. One thing that has changed is the addition of the brand new Force Touch trackpad. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of that later on. All the ports are gonna look familiar if you've seen last year's version. This MacBook Pro ships with the usual MagSafe port, two Thunderbolt ports, a USB 3 port, and headphone jack on one side. And on the other side, you'll see the SDXC card slot, the HDMI port, and a second USB 3 port. There were no surprises getting into our MacBook Pro. We removed the same pentalobe screws we've seen in earlier versions, and with the crack of the bottom case, we're in. Right off the bat, we notice some subtle changes. First up, the trackpad cable has been rerouted over the battery. We also see that Apple decided that adhesive and screws went a bit overboard when securing the battery to the frame, so they stuck to the glue and got rid of the screws. That sounds like Apple. This of course means we need to enlist the help of our eye opener and scraping cards to get the sticky battery out of the frame. Before we could get the battery out, we needed to maneuver the trackpad control board out of the way. We weren't able to fully remove it as Apple has decided to solder the cables to the board. Why this couldn't have been a standard ZIF connector is currently a mystery to us. With the trackpad control board out of the way, we were able to get the battery out of the MacBook Pro. This is a 74.9 watt hour, 6,559 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery that Apple claims will give you up to 10 hours of wireless web time. Next up, we set our sights on the brand new Force Touch trackpad, which has its own board that's home to this touch digitizer chip made by Broadcom and a magical taptic engine that provides haptic feedback for the Force Touch. The trackpad itself is held in place by 10 screws, which were easy enough to remove. And then we just popped it out to get a closer look at this revolutionary pad. And by revolutionary, I mean for 1824. The Taptic engine is made of wire coils around a magnetic core. The electromagnet in the Force Touch trackpad is used to create the tactile or vibration feedback. After separating the trackpad from the bracket, we can see the metal bar that presses against the vibrating feedback motor and the four tabs that might have strain gauges on them. This is one complicated trackpad. Now for something easy, the SSD. This SSD only requires the removal of one screw and it pops right out. This is a PCIe 3.0 board with 128 gigabytes of flash storage. And now onto the logic board, which after a few screws were removed, lifts right out. On board the board, you'll find the Intel Dual Core i5 processor with Intel Iris Graphics 6100, eight gigabytes of SK Hynix made LP DDR3 RAM, which is soldered to the logic board, and the Intel made Thunderbolt 2 controller. Lastly, all we have left is the 13.3 inch 2560 by 1600 retina display that has a pixel density of 227 pixels per inch. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The early 2015 13 inch MacBook Pro with retina display scored a, one out of 10, and here's why. Proprietary pentalobe screws continue to make opening the device unnecessarily difficult. The battery assembly is still entirely glued to the case and still covers the screws holding the trackpad in place, making it impossible to replace the trackpad without first removing the battery. The retina display is a fused unit with no protective glass. If anything ever fails inside the display, the entire assembly will need to be replaced. The RAM is soldered to the logic board following the lead of the MacBook Air. Pay for the upgrade now or be stuck with eight gigabytes. There's no chance for an upgrade. And finally, the proprietary PCIe SSD still isn't a standard drive. Cross your fingers for future compatible drives. For now, you're stuck with the one you've got. And that's our teardown. 
For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. You can also find the teardowns of the 11 inch and 13 inch MacBook Airs. Spoiler alert, not much has changed. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.